In this week's video, I'm testing out GitHub Copilot, which is a new tool that they're previewing in a limited beta. I somehow got accepted into the beta, so I've been testing it out. What it does is it's an AI coding assistant. And usually when I hear AI assistant, I think this is gonna be some buzzword thing that doesn't work, some vaporware, some fake thing. But this actually works incredibly well. I've been like pretty blown away by how well it works. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go through coding a simple demonstration in like five minutes and you'll see how it just fills in almost every line for me without me having to actually type the code. So there's a lot of questions about whether this is good for the world or if there's some downsides, but I'll just show you an example so you can take it all in. And at the end, I'll, uh, I'll elaborate on some of my thoughts. All right, I put a bunch of comments into a JavaScript file and I'm gonna see if Copilot can look at those comments and generate the correct code for me. So the first one says create a div with an H1 and an input inside of it. When I put my cursor below that line, it suggests this line, which creates a div. That's what I want, so I accept its uh, suggestion. The next line puts a H1 and an input inside of that div. Perfect. And then the next line appends that um, new div to the body, which I didn't even ask for, but I do need, so great. So there we go, three, the first three lines are totally correct, just what I want. Let's look in the browser and see what we got. Perfect. Okay, now I wanna ask Copilot to center the div. This is a notoriously difficult thing to do in CSS. A lot of people make jokes about why is it so hard to center a div in CSS. Let's see if Copilot can do it. And so I'm just putting my cursor on the next line and then accepting its suggestion each time. And there you go, it did it. It used that technique of absolutely positioning the div and then offsetting a little bit up and to the left until it gets in the center. It's an older technique. There's better techniques now, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Now, the next thing I have here is to create an event listener on the input. It did that perfectly. And now it's suggesting something that I don't want to do. Uh, I'm just going to take all those other comments I have. They, they all belong inside of this event handler. And uh, first I said, give me a variable with the value. It did that. And then I said, check if that input value is a color. And now this is a little bit complicated. You have to use regular expressions and um, glancing at this, regular expressions are confusing. I'm like, I don't know if that's correct. I'm just gonna accept it and trust that it's, that it's correct and we'll see. And then I said, if it is a color, set the background color of the body to that color. Boom, gives me exactly the code to do that. And if not, set the background color to white. Now it gave me the else, which is perfect. And then the code set the background color to white. So cool. I didn't have to do anything. It wrote all that code for me. Let's see if it works. So as I type in here, if it's a color code, it sets the background to that color. Yeah, it seems to be working. Now I'm gonna add a new comment to say that if the input, or sorry, if the color is too dark, set the color to white. Set the H1 color to white, because I want the H1 to have some contrast with the background. And what it's suggested for me here it doesn't appear to be at all correct to me, so I'm gonna reject that. And I'll say if the stored, if the color stored in value is too dark and see if I get a better result. I got the same result. So I think I need to break this problem apart for Copilot. So I'll first say, set the H1 to a new color. And it gave me the code to do that, no problem. And so it's setting it to that value, but what I wanna do is actually um, look at the value to see what color it represents and then get a contrasting color. So I'm gonna call a function here to do that, which I haven't yet defined. Then I'll go down here and I'll define it. And what I did next was I put in a comment and it auto-completed to say, do you want the opposite color on the color wheel? Which I thought, cool, that's even better than just black or white. And the function body that it generated for me doesn't actually do that. This returns black or white based on the brightness of the color, which is what I originally wanted, but not what the comment um, said. So that's fine. But I didn't quite like the suggestions that it was giving me because they rely on calls to two other functions, hex to RGB and get brightness. So I'd rather have it all in one function here so I don't have to implement these other functions. So I kept changing around the comment trying to get a better result. And eventually I got this, which looked kind of correct. And again, I didn't think too hard about it. I just accepted the solution and then tried it in the browser. And when I typed in a dark color, I, it did change the text to white, but then when I typed in a lighter color, it didn't change it black, back to black. So that didn't seem to work. And instead of debugging this code, 
uh, I just deleted it and decided to go kind of line by line and help Copilot um, through this. Which is funny now that I'm thinking Copilot, I'm helping Copilot rather than Copilot's helping me. Um, so I said convert the hex color to RGB and it it made a reference to a function called hex to RGB. So I'll go ahead and define that after I do this. Then I said, determine if the color is light or dark. And it put in a line here that some formula that I hope correctly determines if the color is a light color, and then just returns black or white based on that value. So there's some formula there. I'm not gonna try to understand it. I'm just gonna go and implement this other hex to RGB function that we need. Um, and so that will, that one auto-completed, it's got some regular expressions, got some other stuff. I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to try it. And um, yeah, that works. When I put in a light color, I get black text. And when I put in a dark color, I get white text. And then I just need to make sure that I set the H1 back to black if it's got a non-color value. And then I'm done. Copilot pretty much wrote all my code with me just guiding it along with some comments. I think this is a lot like using GPS in your car, where I think more and more of us tend to turn on GPS to navigate us to wherever we're driving, even if we should know how to get there. It's like a place that you go to a lot or it's in your neighborhood. You still turn on the GPS because you just don't want to think about it or make a mistake or you just want to let the uh, phone decide what the best route is and take into account traffic or whatever. Um, but as a result, I think a lot of us don't know our way around our own areas or maybe our kind of like spatial reasoning about directions is not as good as it probably used to be because we had to think very hard about where am I going? You know, these days, if somebody gives me directions and says like, oh yeah, turn up, go up here and turn left and then turn right and go down this street. I just like, uh, I'm not listening. Just give me the address and I'll put it in my GPS. Like I can't even comprehend what you're saying. I feel like GitHub Co uh, Copilot gives you a little bit of that feeling when you write code. Um, and I think there's a tendency to just dismiss that as being a bad thing, but it's not always a bad thing. I mean, there's a lot of things in life where, I mean, like, do you want to give up GPS in your car? It's clearly a very useful and good thing. Um, you know, you could give up your car entirely and you'd be stronger, right? Cause you'd have to walk everywhere or run. Um, but I don't see a lot of people <laughs> arguing that we should do that. So I think Copilot is similar and hopefully in the, in the best case, what it could do is allow us to not have to memorize a bunch of trivial details about code, like the kinds of things you might need to look up a lot. I think as you're coding, there's so many things that you need to have memorized or else you have to Google them. And it's not like I'm such a good programmer because I memorized a bunch of facts. Uh, what makes you a good programmer is that you can think of good, you know, good solutions or solve good problems. Um, and you could imagine a person who can't remember any details about the framework they're using, but has really great ideas for software and knows how to create that logic but has to look up in the documentation every single time. How do you do this again? How do you do this again? Well, Copilot can auto-complete a lot of those things. You can just tell it, I want um, you know, to convert this date into this other format and it will just do it. And it's like, oftentimes it's correct. You can even um, have it generate regular expressions, which are oftentimes incorrect, but regular expressions, the syntax is so confusing and so hard to remember that if you get something vaguely correct, you can then just like move things around and kind of get it to where it needs to be. So that's pretty cool. You know, another thing I would liken this to is the Tesla's like self-driving features in their car where, you know, a lot of people say it's too dangerous to rely on. Like, and, and they even say that too, like keep your eyes on the road, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Um, you know, you're forced to kind of hold the steering wheel and prove that you're, that you're holding it and paying attention. And, um, but you turn your brain off a bit if you're doing that, right? Like you're just, you're on autopilot, you're holding the steering wheel, it becomes hard to pay attention because the car's basically doing everything for you. It's basically correctly steering the car. So it's hard to like remain super focused when you know you pretty much don't have to. Um, it's the same with GitHub Copilot. It's hard to start thinking critically about the code when, when nine times out of 10, the code it gave you was correct. It's like, why bother? Another interesting side effect of using Codepilot is that kind of, it's kind of the opposite of what I just said, is that you actually do need to read the code sometimes because it gives you incorrect code or you're not sure if it's correct. So you need to read it. You see some code and you have to read it and think about what it does, which is funny because you can write code a lot without actually reading a lot of code. And reading code is an important skill, 
that a lot of us don't practice enough. So it's actually forcing me to read through some code and, and reason about it and say, is this actually going to produce the result I want? Sometimes it's got a whole algorithm that's correct, and then it returns some value that's totally wrong. I have to look through it and figure out uh, where did it go wrong? Now, there's, there's kind of two, two types of code that get produced by Copilot. One is like you ask for a function like parse date from string, and it will give you a function that does that. And you think there's probably a million <laughs> implementations of that on GitHub. And so it's basically just like found one of those and is giving it to me. And you can imagine how that works. Like that doesn't seem so magical. Like it just, you could do a Google search for that and go to the first result and find the first bit of code. And it's probably a function that does that. But then other times it's much more magical. Like sometimes I wrote a function that stored some value and then I needed to write a function to retrieve it. And when I placed my, I, I thought in my head, I should make a function called retrieve. Um, I think it was like retrieve from history or something. And I clicked my mouse to, to type that. And it said function retrieve from history parameter I. It was exactly what I wanted to type. And that, that, that term didn't exist anywhere else in my code. And so sometimes it has this, you know, very magical quality where it sort of figures out what you're thinking. And it's, it's pretty shocking when that happens. Of course, there's some, there's some valid concerns about things like security, uh, beginning programmers who don't know what they're doing, relying on this too much and, and kind of copyright. Like, you know, if there's code on GitHub, that doesn't mean it's just free to take and do whatever you want with. There's licenses that apply. And am I plagiarizing those things? Am I violating someone's license? If I use GitHub Copilot, um, they sort of just say, it's up to you to like check that your code is okay. But it's like, how the heck are you supposed to do that? I don't know where it came from. So it's really interesting. And I think a lot of times these types of innovations seem scary and bad at first, but they almost always end up being good. So like if there is a concern about licenses, it seems like this is probably such a important and powerful tool that we're going to have to just figure that out. Like I can't imagine that we just say like, ah, oh, there's too many license violations. So this type of tool, this type of product is just can't exist or something. Um, there's got to be some way to figure it out. Maybe, maybe you just run it on, um, you find a way to access a lot of code that's been, uh, you know, opted in to say that it can be used in this way, or you run it on the code within your company and it, and it, uh, all of its logic is based on code that your company has written or something like that. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, but I'm fairly optimistic about the future of this kind of tool.